The richness of Hadith literature is also manifest in that for nearly all angelic figures we now possess a very detailed description of the physical appearance and of the duties performed. There is in these collections of traditions a clear tendency to mingle anthropomorphic imageries of angels with other elements taken, for instance, from the animal and the mineral kingdoms, as well as with other details designed to emphasize the supernatural essence of the angels. Here, for example, is a tradition about Gabriel as reported by Suyuti. I quote it from the excellent monograph which Stephen Burge recently devoted to Suyuti's work. I quote, Gabriel has two wings and he has a bell strung with pearls. His front teeth shine like a bald forehead. His head is splattered tightly like small pearls. The pearls are like snow. His feet are greenish. End of quote. Also found in Suyuti is another tradition according to which the four bearers of the throne have the respective forms of a bull, a lion, a man and an eagle. This is very interesting, since this tradition evidently echoes that of the Old Testament book of Ezekiel and the speculation it gave rise to in Judaism. The same tradition was also dealt with in Al-Andalus by the famous mystic Ibn Arabi. It goes without saying that this motley collection of traditions, with all that it contains in terms of lively and picturesque details, became a fantastic source of inspiration to many artists. Medieval Islamic manuscripts provide us indeed with an ample range of angelic representations. Moving back to texts, we'll now focus on one particular attempt at interpreting this traditional material in a philosophical way. We'll take this example from a corpus of writings known as Rasail Ikhwan Safa, the Epistles of the Brethren of Purity, presumably compiled in Iraq during the 10th century or even before by a group of anonymous thinkers. The purpose of these authors who appear to have had close connections with Ismailism, a sub-branch of Shi'ism, was to reconcile the message of the Islamic revelation with a rational and scientific approach as inherited from various cultures of the past and from ancient Greek philosophy in particular. This purpose was shared by many Muslim philosophers, but in the case of the Ikhwan Safa, we may affirm that this was done with a truly exceptional level of syncretism. Taking for granted that philosophers and revealed religions are but two different ways to reach the same objective, the Ikhwan Safa developed a system in which certain angels of the Islamic tradition are meant to correspond specifically to the different spheres of the heavens as established by the scientists. Thus, by taking up the Ptolemy, Ptolemy's model of representation of the universe and making use of a complex network of symbolic and more especially astrological relations, the Ikhwan associate, for instance, Israfil with the sun, Jibril with Mars, Munkar, Nakir and the angel of death with Saturn and the sphere of the fixed stars with the bearers of the throne. We'll conclude this unit by quoting one particular passage from the Rasail Ikhwan Safa. A passage in which these syncretistic views about angels are made very explicit. I quote, You should know, my brother, that the stars of the celestial sphere are angels of God and of the realm of his skies. God, how powerful and lofty is he, has created them for the cultivation of his world, for the organization of his creatures, and for the governing of his arrangement. They are the vice regents of God on his earth. They govern his servants and preserve the laws of his prophets by the execution of the decrees for his servants for the sake of their well-being and the preservation of their order under the best conditions." End of quote. In these last two videos, then, we have focused on angels. But in this one, on Islam, 
We have also encountered Iblis, or Satan, who for Muslims is a genie. Such supernatural beings, especially those with, with evil characteristics, can also be considered as demons. And demons are found in many religions and cultures. In the next two videos, we will have a look at such demons in ancient Mesopotamia. Mm -hmm.